third case we are looking at is when zeta is between 0 and 1. This is the so-called underdamped case. It means it's still stable. So this is your transfer function. When zeta is between 0 and 1, the transfer function ends up having complex poles, i.e. if you solve the characteristic equation, you get complex roots. So you can complete the square for the characteristic equation. If you do that, this is what your g of s looks like. You can write an expression for y of s for unit step. This is what it looks like. If you do partial fraction expansion and write for y of t as by inverting, this is the expression you get. This is nothing but an exponentially decaying sine term. And if you look at the plot, this is what it looks like. Plotting the poles of the transfer function in the complex plane looks like this. And this is the complex pair. The top pole being minus omega n zeta plus i times root of 1 minus zeta square. And the bottom pole being minus omega n times zeta minus i times root of 1 minus zeta square. The fourth case that we are looking at is undamped, this is where zeta equal to 0. So the transfer function becomes kdc times omega n squared divided by s squared plus omega n squared. You can write an expression for y of s. And if you recall, this looks like Laplace of a pure sine or cos. In fact, if you do the Laplace inverse by doing partial traction expansion, this is the expression you get. So this is going to be 1 minus sine omega nt plus a cos of 0. a cos of 0 is pi by 2. So in fact, this is y of t is kdc times 1 minus cos omega nt. And if you plot that, this is how it looks. For comparison, I have put the underdamped case next to it. You know, if you look at the poles of this transfer function, they lie on the imaginary axis, like so. This is the zero damped or undamped case. The top pole is at omega n times i, the bottom pole here is minus omega n times i. The next three cases that you're going to look at are unstable systems. Now, the first among these is when omega is between minus 1 and 0. This uh, is a, a diametrically opposite to the um, underdamped stable case. So, this is our transfer function as usual. Again, since uh, uh, zeta is between minus 1 and 0, this uh, ends up having. Uh, complex roots so you can do the completion of the square like so and then you have the expression for y of s assuming uh, u of s is a step function once you're done with that you can solve or do the partial fraction expansion and invert y of s to get y of t which is kdc times 1 minus uh, this expression here if you notice here right here this expression here since uh, zeta is less than zero zeta is negative this whole thing becomes positive so essentially what you're having here is a sine function that is growing exponentially uh, as opposed to decaying exponentially and if you look at the step response of this system with the uh, zeta between minus one and zero you see that now where are the poles uh, the poles are obviously in the right half plane that's why it's unstable and you have symmetric uh, poles uh, because of the complex nature of the poles now the top pole here is minus omega and zeta plus i times root of 1 minus zeta squared and the corresponding uh, pole on the lower side is minus omega and zeta minus i times root of 1 minus zeta squared here it is plus here it is minus
the next case that you are going to look at is zeta equal to minus 1 this is the uh, diametrically opposite of the critically damped stable system this is critically damped and unstable uh, so the transfer function is like so now here's zeta equal to minus 1 therefore this denominator becomes s squared minus 2 omega n s plus omega n squared now this can be written as s minus omega in the whole square. Now if you write the expression for y of s with u of s is 1 by s for step. This is the expression you get. You do partial fraction expansion and invert uh, y of s to get y of t. And this is the expression that you get. Now if you notice here you get an exponent e to the power of some positive number growing with time. Similarly here e to the power of some positive number growing with time. Uh, obviously th this is going to be growing exponentially uh, this is larger than this so uh, when as t grows this is larger than this term and therefore uh, this will uh, go towards the positive side up, up like that and if you look at the graph and that's what you get and where are the poles um, in the complex plane they are in the right hand side both at the same location which is a distance of omega n from the imaginary axis this is the imaginary axis the final case we are looking at is zeta less than minus one which is the over damped and unstable case just like we did before this is the transfer function since uh, zeta is less than minus one uh, this will have real and distinct roots so it can be factorized like so now this is the expression for y of, y of s, this is u of s. Uh, to get y of t, you just do partial fraction expansion and invert the Laplace transform y of s and this is the expression you get. Now let's focus on zeta plus root of zeta squared minus 1 and zeta minus root of zeta squared minus 1. Since uh, zeta is less than minus 1, uh, this is negative. Now the question is, is this plus root of zeta squared minus 1 negative still? Uh, root of zeta squared minus 1 is definitely less than zeta. So this plus zeta is going to be less than 0. It's going to be less than 0. This is obviously less than 0. So negative times negative here becomes positive. So this becomes an exponential growth. This two becomes exponential growth, and if you look at the graph, that is what you see. This is the over damped system growing like that. For comparison, I put the critically damped system right here. Now, where are the roots? They are obviously in the right half plane. And two distinct real roots, and the two roots are these. And in summary, you need to understand the concept of a transfer function and related terminologies. Understand characteristic equation, poles, zeros, and plotting poles and zeros in the complex plane. You need to understand DC gain. Understand the first order system and time constant. Understand second order system. You need to study the responses for various damping factors and understand where poles are located for various damping factors now the, what this means is when you see the location of the poles in the complex plane you should be able to uh, uh, see what the step response is going to look like that 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 will basically tell me that you understand the second order uh, systems